My point would be that if we are having uh, concepts about cities that travel around the world and shape how we interpret and analyze and think critically or think in policy terms about different cities, it's quite a problem if those if we don't have good ways to put those to work in different places, to question them, to interrogate them, to refuse them, to start thinking from somewhere else. Um, so I think it's terribly interesting that this workshop brings together two places which usually each of them would perhaps be thought about um, in circuits that perhaps originate from like North America or Europe. And the ideas would, would travel and maybe cause a lot of uh, uh, consternation or would be a bit perplexing what you do with the idea of gentrification which is imagined initially in sort of 1960s and 70s London associated with individuals buying rundown working class properties and fixing them up and shaping property prices how does that relate to massive you know million people cities being developed by um, uh, the government in China around Shanghai. Uh, can we talk about those as both gentrification or do we need to have some other concepts? And similarly in South Africa we orient ourselves very often to an English speaking literature that's circulating around the world and frame our questions in that way. Does urban change in downtown Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town reflect a gentrifying impulse or is it a work that's creating a new kind of inclusive urbanism? So we have we both have questions to ask of the center, and I think it's interesting to share reflections on how we build knowledge from a different context. There's um, a development in Johannesburg in the former chemical industry industrial site in Mordefontein, um, where a businessman from Shanghai is bought the land and is proposing to build some fantastically elaborate, futuristic looking suburb and this, um, that would be one example of a, a very direct link. People moving from China, many people living in um, South Africa who are Chinese um, and investors, consultants and so on and across Africa this movement of Chinese people and um, various kinds of urban design initiatives, various kinds of barter and and financial arrangements to trade minerals for bits of urban fabric. So much of, of the continent is being shaped by these relationships, very direct relationships. So I think um, we're obliged to think about that. We can't avoid thinking about and with Chinese urbanism.